So the Radeon RX 6800 XT, now based on the latest leaks and rumors guys, it seems like this graphics card will be a complete monster based on Navi 21, with up to 80 CUs, a 505 square millimeter die, a massive cache size to compensate for the fairly small 256 bit interface, and AMD refers to this as the infinity cache, we got up to 16 gigabytes of GDDR6, and finally we got clock speeds that should reach PS5 numbers. Now, thanks to a wide range of credible leakers such as Red Gaming Tech and Rogue Game, we now have a fairly good idea about AMD's upcoming Radeon RX 6800 based on RDNA 2. Now, this card looks extremely competitive and powerful, and to put things in perspective, we actually think that this card can compete with the Nvidia's GeForce RTX 3080 with 68 stream multiprocessors. Here's the question, guys. There is a 20 gigabyte RTX 3080 around the corner. Think about this. Why is this card coming? And most rumors point to the RX 6700 being based on Navi 22 and getting up to 12 gigabytes of GDDR6, while the 6900 and the 6800 possibly getting up to 16 gig. It makes sense to believe that Nvidia will respond with cards that got equal or even more VRAM. In case you didn't get the chance to grab a 3080 at launch, there might be reasons to wait a few more weeks, guys. As we know, there's a 3080 Ti and the 30. 60 Ti is set to release in October, and if you're interested, you'll find everything you need to know about both these graphics cards in the videos linked up down below. But yeah, in this video, we're gonna look at the latest leaks and rumors around the AMD's next gen Big Navi RDNA 2. And in case you're new to this channel, hey, what is up? My name is Rob, and welcome to Arbin Hardware. And on this channel, I mostly cover gaming PC builds. I always try my best to build the best price and performance gaming machine at a specific price point. And in case you're interested, in my upcoming Ampere build, make sure to subscribe to never miss my next upcoming gaming PC. Alright, so with that said, let's just cut to the case. What is up with the 6800 meeting the RTX 3080 level of performance? Well, apparently, according to poll from Red Gaming Tech, AMD is pushing the 6800 quite hard. Let's start by touching on the buzzword super quick. By now, we are quite confident that RDNA 2 will have a relatively small buzz size compared compared to Nvidia, but I think it's important to have in mind that this shouldn't be seen as a sign of RDNA 2 being less powerful. It turns out that manufacturing a wide bus width is more expensive than making a small one. It makes sense, but how would you make a powerful GPU to compete on a small bus width then? Well, according to various leakers, AMD have been able to accomplish this by having a GPU cache that could be as big as 128 megabytes in size. Now, as for the RDNA 6800 graphics card, we aren't sure how big this cache size would be for this graphics card. It would make sense if AMD would scale the cache size in correlation with the bus width. So, as for the 6800, the cache size would probably be a bit smaller than the 128 megabytes, and the specs might perhaps look something like this Navi 21 based GPU, a 256 bit bus interface, up to 16 gigs of GDDR6, between 60 and 70 CUs or so, and a clock speed around PS5 numbers we're talking about, a GPU base clock of about 2 GHz here, maybe perhaps 2.2. According to Paul on Red Gaming Tech, who's proven to be very accurate in his recent leaks, all these numbers combined should result in performance in line with the RTX 3080. Now, I think it's important to have a mind here, guys, that we're most likely talking about traditional rasterization here and not ray tracing, and from what I've read and heard, AMD seems to be a bit behind Nvidia's latest Ampere architecture when it comes to being able to calculate ray tracing in games. A few leakers here are claiming that we should expect Turing level performance or perhaps above that, but we shouldn't expect Navi 2X to quite reach Ampere levels as for ray tracing performance. Now going back to traditional rasterization performance, one of the reasons why RDNA 2 is said to be so competitive comes down to the main 
main architecture improvements AMD has been able to accomplish. For one, Ordinary 2 is based on a more advanced manufacturing process known than the Ampere, and Ordinary 2 is supposed to be a lot more power efficient. Now, AMD promises 50% better performance per watt, but according to Paul on Red Gaming Tech, this number could be even greater. In fact, it could be as good as 60%, and this number, guys, is per CU or compute unit, which, if this is true, guys, would make Ordinary 2 a complete monster. In terms of gaming performance, we have actually seen a yet to be named Radeon GPU being benchmarked in Ashes of the Singularities. It is hard to pinpoint which GPU this might be, but it looks like it could be a Navi 22 based GPU, perhaps the RX 6700. Who knows at this point, and it's really not that important, but what it shows is that it at least tells us that Ordinary 2 can perform on a RTX 2080 Ti level as a bare minimum. But why am I telling you guys this? Well, I've seen a couple of comments where people have been saying that Ordinate 2 don't even have a chance to compete against Ampere. Now, though I think it's important to not be overhyped and, you know, we should all treat these rumors with a grain of salt, it is a bit ignorant to think that AMD won't be competitive this generation. Now, with all that being said, as for pricing guys, I think AMD would price Big Navi quite aggressively. Yes, TSMC 7 nanometer process is said to be more expensive than Samsung's 8 nanometer. Nvidia Ampere, AMD might be able to cut some of the cost for this GPU as they seem to be going with a smaller buzz with. Anyway guys, on October 28th we will have all the answers. Now I want to know in the comments which card are you looking forward to the most? Are you going Nvidia or are you going AMD? If you don't want to miss my upcoming PC build based on Ampere or Ordinate 2, make sure to subscribe to never miss an episode.